Steve McKay here, I'm doing a presentation on substation automation. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, let me just get the right color sorted out here with the nice yellow. It's easier to see. Um, yeah. There we go. Okay. So really, I want to try and do in the space of 10 minutes a quick review on substation automation. A bit tricky to do that in a few minutes, but um, let's go for it. Um, these presentations are done every week. Um, they really are a um, sort of an attempt to um, give you a quick introduction to a topic without sucking into hours of video, which obviously would drive you into a frenzy. So just briefly, I just want to go through quickly the communication model to put everything into context. I definitely don't want to waste too much of your time on um, too much arcane stuff. But um, really, the OSI model, which you've probably heard of many times before, is probably the, the building block when you look at anything um, in the um, industrial sort of world and there's seven layers here i'm not going to go through all seven layers in detail but suffice to say that the um the uh various layers of the physical all the way up to the application layer which is the osi model and the idea is just in a quick few minutes the physical layer is basically the copper connection so for example ethernet connectors data link layer is the ethernet frame the network layer would be the IP protocol, for example, internet protocol, where you think here of things such as the um, internet's 128-bit uh, or 32-bit address, IP address. Then the transport layer is really the um, guaranteed delivery of a package. So, for example, you have the TCP protocol sitting over here, um, and guarantees delivery. The problem is that can create a bit of overhead, so you often use a UDP for um, video. Then really, I'm not too worried about the presentation and session layer. Presentation layer, you can think of the encryption. But the application layer is the other important layer, which is really the um, HTTP protocol, your web browser, what that sees, how that interprets data, that's encapsulated in the OSI model. Other protocols you would have heard about are SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, which is quite useful actually. Um, substation automation, you could use it to uh, give information about little points, traffic nodes. Um, the other one uh, you'll often see used quite a bit is the um, FTP protocol, File Transfer Protocol, it's used quite extensively. So that's sort of a building block for a lot of the um, uh, communication systems today, open systems. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Just think about an onion. You're about to have dinner. So onion, you have different layers, and you'll find your user message, the user layer, and you often hear about that user foundation field bus. User layer is built right in the middle. It's a core kernel of your good old onion. And you peel away each layer of the onion, which is a protocol. So that's a fundamental way of accessing information, user layer. So spoke about that. Um, so really, I just want to you'd probably ask, well, what has this got to do with the um, good old um, sub, uh, substation automation? But it will become evident now. So really, the idea is that you are looking at various network topologies, which is very really physical. And um, really, what we mostly deal with today is a bus topology, not the same certain ring. Sometimes a bus appears to be a bus that's actually a star. So, for example, you can think of a star radiating from a switch. Bus topology. Um, and again, as I said, I'm not too worried about this. I just want to move on to the actual sub substation automation. Star topology, as I said, is probably used uh, for switches, but you often see it described as a bus, even though it operates, it looks physically like a star. Ring topology you see used with uh, fiber optic networks. Um, very good if, uh, for security, especially if, a ring, if your ring could break. Now, the EPRI, which is the Electrical Power Research Institute, developed a suite of protocols known as UCA. 
and that's based on Ethernet and incorporates TCP IP and uses MMS protocol. Not going to worry about that. Um, so it allows interconnectivity, and the first version came out in 1991, and that was obviously the precursor to proper substation um, solution. So all based around the client-server paradigm. Client <coughs> is where you extract information from the server, which you're very familiar with. And the other important concept is a publisher-subscribe concept, which is quite a clever approach. Often you use the protocols such as DeviceNet, uh, from um, CANBUS, which is used in the automobile industry. So the idea there is that the uh, publisher subscribe says that you have various publishers of information, for example, instrument gathering flow, flow information or a, or a instrument gathering um, current data. That publishes on the bus at a particular defined area at time. And then you have subscribers who subscribe to that data and use it in their application. So you have a published subscribe, or sometimes you hear it used in terms of producer consumer. So, very important part of the whole substation automation world. So, publisher, agent, topic, you have rules, subscriptions, and you have subscribers who subscribe to the um, publishers. Data. So it's quite an important concept. Basic features of IEC 61850, which is the underpinning for the substation automation, is obviously trying to support all functions in a substation, provide interoperability, which means connectivity between different instruments, different devices, and um, obviously use things such as IEDs, which I'll talk about in a tick. And a little bit of concern about the non-deterministic behavior of the Ethernet, but that's not such a big issue today with switches, as we've spoken about in other presentations. You also hear about the DMP3 protocol, which is used for sort of SCADA applications, and this is obviously a um, sort of another approach, but it's different to 61850. So DMP3, low-speed links, 61850 is based on the higher speed um, LAN, WAN world, where ind ind independence from the organization of storage bytes was important. Um, DMP3 is very byte efficient because it's often transferred over low speeds, and 61850 is often based on Ethernet, so speed's not such a big issue. The speed is there. So really, what the, the 61850 is, it consists of the definition of the architecture, extract definition of objects and services, and obviously maps it to a specific profile. based around the good old MAC protocol many, many years ago. So, and there's an equivalent to DMP called the 60870, which I'm not going to worry about, um, which is quite popular in Europe, actually. So 61850 is developed provide a more structured approach, separate data model from the method of communication, so it's totally different, and it uses Ethernet TCP IP as the underlying underpinning protocols. It allows vendor independence, because you want competing vendors such as ABB, Siemens, and others to provide solutions. And you hopefully want them to interconnect interoperably. So the purpose is model information about the real world, single line diagrams, Defines when to exchange values, defines how to exchange values, <coughs> describes the recipient of the values, and so basically around the configuration of ID. So here's a sort of typical example of the standard status and the sort of development of the standard, the 61850 standard. And these are the different parts of the standard. As you can see, pretty uh, wide-ranging uh, protocol standard. Um, so three, four, and five of the standard identify the general specific functional requirements for communications in a substation. Again, focusing strongly on the substation. Abstract services 7.2, look at the basic communication structure for substations and PD equipment. 
common data classes and uh, 7.3. Uh, common data classes is obviously clearly defined the data, very important. Abstraction of data objects and 7.4. And then mapping of abstract data and services. So tells you how the mapping of objects and services that happens, the MMS protocol, and provides specifications for the mechanisms. So these are just, to look at it from a slightly more practical point of view, you often hear about RTUs, PLCs, protection relays, and the IEDs, which I mentioned earlier on, and intelligent electronic devices. Often a lot of overlap between the two. So you've got remote terminal units, as an example. Um, and here's an ID, a relay, for example. Um, you could have a remote terminal unit being a uh, PLC, really, to be honest with you. PLC is the other device that you hear used, which we've covered on other courses. Very flexible device, and let's see, here's a typical example of one, and often the ladder logic is that programming technique to use. Protection relay is another critical part of the substation, ranging from overcurrent to earth fault, distance protection, all these really interesting topics, and here's a particular protection example. Time, current, and this is all digitized, and we have to transfer this information using 61850 protocol. IEDs, protection control metering, and lots of, basically it's just for a, a very intelligent RTU or um, PLC, so lots of overlap between the different areas. Metering functions, protection control, monitoring, metering, and obviously data communications to transfer the information to a SCADA system using the 61850 protocol as the underpinning, as an example of ID functionality. And typical comparison between relays, which is not really relevant here. So that just gives you a quick run through on the 61850 protocol and some of the devices that are used to connect. Any questions, please shout. I'll be most gratified to answer them, but thank you very much.